trend analysis is a very simple but very important concept for this ISO Plus exam and that's precisely why we're covering it in a separate video right now. And it's important because just when you think that you're in control, that's when something new happens and surprises you. And surprises are not something that you wish for every single day when you work in cybersecurity. So let's learn in a couple of minutes how not to focus just on the details, but also on the bigger picture. So trend analysis is a way to look at the past, look at some information from the past, try to learn from it, and then try to infer, to deduce, to predict somehow the future. Now, trust me, this is going to work much better with security and computer systems than it does with the, the lottery or the, the stock market. <laughs> it's basically a way to be proactive and try to predict what might happen, which is completely different from being reactive. And being reactive is what we've seen when we implement incident response. So this is not incident response. This is trend analysis. And even if it sounds a bit metaphorical, uh, trend analysis is not just about predicting the future, but it can also help you understand the past better. Because after an event has happened, has passed, as time passes on, you might be able to find more information, gather more information about that event, and that information can lead you to better understand what happened in there, what kind of vulnerabilities were exploited, and basically what you would need to do in the future to avoid similar situations like those. All right, but to build a trend out of some metrics, we first need to collect those metrics. So what exactly do we need to look for? Well, we can start by looking at frequency-based metrics. For example, how often do login failures happen in our network, in our systems? Or how often the network traffic spikes? And how big is the spike, right? Or in which work days does it happen? And at which hours? And so on. Uh, we can also look for CPU usage spikes on workstations, for example, as well. Also, on the frequency-based metrics, we can look for the number of errors. How many errors are generated in a normal day, per minute, per hour, or per day by a specific service or by a specific application? Generally, you gather this information or use a tool specialized for this, and you calculate the mean and look for outliers, that is, points with very high or very low deviation from that mean. Those are the points that are mostly going to interest you because those are going to be the exceptions. Then we can start looking at volume-based metrics. And volume-based basically means instead of how often an event happens, just look at how much of a specific item of a specific resource is consumed. For example, how many logs are generated normally during one day? Or how many events, login, logout events, uh, file access events, or anything else that you can monitor are generated in a specific time frame? Network traffic, again, a very important metric. We need to understand how does network traffic normally look like? What is a normal volume of traffic during a workday? And logs are always a very rich source of information, not just because they contain a lot of useful information, but also because we can monitor how often are logs generated? If our logs grow in volume faster than they previously did, then that's a good indication that something major has happened inside of the network. Maybe we can have some, um, some additional traffic, some additional applications that we know nothing about. Maybe we're infected with malware that tries to access and brute force some logins somewhere in the network. Nevertheless, a sudden increase, a sudden spike in log generation in any system, in any network, is always a very good reason to investigate. And of course, there is going to be a bit of work here because we're not just going to collect a bunch of information and immediately infer something out of it. We're going to try to normalize that information and try to group similar events together so that we can look for suspicious events that were recorded outside of what we consider to be normal. So standard deviation is going to specify how close our values in a set to their averages. Or their means. Now similar events of course can be statistically grouped together because that's going to be the best way to immediately detect those outliers that might warrant some investigation. And an interesting uh, idea is the fact that trend monitoring can also help you get more information out of your alerts, out of the system that are generating alerts non-stop. Because a very big problem with most monitoring systems that we have in our networks is that they generate just too much information. There are just too many alerts 
we don't have enough manpower to process them all and to filter the noise from the useful information. So what usually happens in these situations is one of these two scenarios. First, the security admins try to tune down the sensitivity of those alerts so that they don't get overwhelmed, they don't get so high a number of alerts which makes, of course, uh, smart attacks like those slow or sparse attacks go unnoticed simply because they don't generate any alerts anymore due to their uh, low sensitivity of any sensors, or simply they get ignored because nobody has the time to look through 50,000 alerts every single day if or maybe there's some useful information in there. So another, I would say, perhaps unexpected thing to track might actually be how many alerts were actual security incidents. And perhaps going even a bit deeper into what was the incident response time for those events. In other words, use trend analysis to determine how well you are at performing your cybersecurity job. Now, that might be useful, of course, for your daily cybersecurity business, but also for your next evaluation or pay raise. Why not? And don't forget that trend analysis can also help you out tremendously with audits and preparation for compliance audits. Now, if you periodically scan your network to determine any trends in performance and security, well, then you will already have everything ready for a security or a compliance audit when time comes. You will already know how well you will comply. And generally, at least from time to time, try to compare any security trends that you find within your organization, your company, your network, with some industry standards or information that's from the outside world. Basically, try to find out if there's anything else happening out there that applies to you and to other companies similar to you. Try to validate those trends that you've detected within your company and see if they fall into the normal ranges, the expected ranges for other companies like yourself. Now, this information can come from a number of sources and there is no single centralized location where you can just go and compare your trends with everybody else other than Facebook, perhaps. But this is going to be about cybersecurity. So one first destination you can uh, you can pick is going to be, for example, the SANS Institute website, which provides a lot of security resources and a lot of information about any vulnerabilities that are currently out there. Another one is dark reading. Uh, an interesting source of article about new hacks and exploits out there. Microsoft is uh, publishing a Defender Security Intelligence Report, and that's not just Microsoft, but any uh, security vendor out there is going to periodically publish their own uh, white papers, their reports about the current trends and current state of affairs in the world of cybersecurity. For example, FireEye with a list of recent zero-day exploits, threat intelligence reports as well. Alien Vault, as usual, they provide a lot of information in a threat intelligence digest. Symantec also provides you with a lot of security intelligence, secure works, and of course Cisco, which hosts Talos Intelligence, going to provide you with a lot of information about current vulnerabilities out there. Now, most vendors you're going to see that they pretty much publish the same information. Most vendors know about the same threats out there. And that's not necessarily a bad thing because, you know, validating the same information from multiple sources, it's always going to make it more reliable. But keep in mind that many of them are also publishing this information to promote their own security products. Well, that's also not a very bad thing because basically, you know, you're going to find out about a vulnerability or some type of attack that is magically mitigated by a specific box or security solution from vendor X, Y or Z. That's not a bad thing, but try to filter out the marketing information in there and try to understand what is relevant to you and to your cybersecurity business. Now, of course, there are drawbacks to trend analysis as well. And the number one, actually, the only drawback to trend analysis, I would say, is the fact that it's very time consuming, it requires a lot of resources, requires a lot of dedicated effort. So there are automated tools that can at least partially do this job for you. And number one on this list is going to be, I think it's probably the third time I'm mentioning this during this training, 
and these are going to be the SIEM solutions, the Security Information Event Manager solutions. They can help you not just with collecting that information because that's what SIEM solutions do by default, but they're also going to help you plot some previous historical trends and also try to infer some information and run some what-if analysis in order to predict some future trends, at least in the very near future. And as I usually say uh, during these trainings, don't forget about the people. I know you don't normally forget about them, but keep them in mind for trend analysis as well, because there's another type of trend. How well trained is your staff? How well trained are your employees? Because people come and go, technologies change, infrastructure changes, the level at which your staff, your employees are prepared for facing a cyber attack might not be the ideal one that you want to believe. So try to periodically train your employees in cybersecurity and test them periodically as well with at least a small phishing campaign just to see where you are right now and try to avoid any unpleasant future surprises. So the bottom line here is a short one. Understand trend analysis, why it is useful, what type of metrics you would normally look for, understand why a SIEM solution can help you out with trend analysis, and don't forget to like, subscribe, and good luck on the exam. Thank you.